Okay, so it's Saturday, February 16th, and as you see in my last video, we got the posi unit together, rain gears bolted on, torqued down to, what was it, 70 foot-pounds. I have the bearing pressed on the new pinion gear, and in case I didn't mention it, this is a 325 ring and pinion. I'm getting rid of the old 279s, which are right there. And for those of you who have not watched any of my other videos and don't keep up, it's going in the 68 Torino, which we rebuilt the transmission on and have yet to try it out. But I want to get this ring and pinion in here and try that out. And we've already got our pinion def set on this thing after fooling with it last night. This is my homemade uh, pinion def checking tool. Now, when you buy a brand new ring and pinion, if you can see right... I don't know if you can see there or not. They'll mark what the depth is supposed to be. It's one inch seventeen thousandths. And that depth is supposed to be from the center of your ring gear to this surface right here. And I used a depth mic to check off of this plate. See, this plate is two hundred and eighty thousandths. So theoretically, if this surface is the center of the ring gear, I would depth mic from here to here subtract the 280 thickness of the plate and that will give me my pinion depth but this homemade uh, pinion depth checking tool uh, you, you gotta watch it because these cases these are four nine inch cases and I'd say a lot of other types of cases um, the way this board it's some of them are not exactly in the center now on this one I def might from this surface to this surface with the plate off and I also checked the caps and what I found out was that actually it's off centered a little bit you can see I got 440 right there and 450 so half of that is 5,000 which means the center of my ring gear is 5,000 above this surface right here so after a bunch of checking what I did was I, I took my measurement and added five and I have a 12,000 shim in it right now and I got one inch 16 thousandths and after looking through all my selections of shims here that's as close as I can get it with what I got so we're going to put this the rest of the way together I have some gear marking compound right here and I have a diagram somewhere that came with a new ring opinion and tells you an acceptable looking wear pattern. You put that gear marking compound on it after you get your backlash set and we kind of double check our depth or our gear mesh to make sure our depth is correct. So set this camera on the tripod and we're going to get this thing back together. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get a rain gear in it. I pulled the pinion back out for two reasons. It's a lot easier to get this rain gear in here when you can lay your, your uh, center section flat on the table. My vise only holds it right here and it gets a little clumsy. It's just a lot easier to set it straight down in there and do it like that. Before you do that, always make sure you mark these and don't get them mixed up. It does matter which one came on one side because a lot of them, you know, they were mass produced so they're not bored exactly straight I mean because this one this distance from here to the bottom is more shallower than the other it's only like a couple thousands but still it's a difference and so I got both of these in I made sure my adjusting caps spin okay make sure your threads are all clean before you start putting stuff together because it's just a pain in the butt to try to throw it all together and realize that these won't turn and I've got these just snug down turn this side turns a little easier than the other that's just the way it is sometimes like I said they when you when things are mass produced they're not exact so I'm gonna take the new one off hopefully I don't have to take the other one off I may have to loosen it up to get the race in there I'm not going to oil anything up yet. I'm going to wait till I get together and just squirt some uh, gear oil down in those bearings. 
because it just gets too, everything gets all messy on your hands, it gets slick and you can't really work with it very well. They're all roller bearings anyway, not sealed bearings, so you can easily get oil down inside of them after it's together. Just loosen that up, see if I can't push that in there like that. And it did. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this heavy thing in here. Hopefully, I won't. I'm going to have to take them both off. That's okay. Actually, I should have left that one on. I could have done it that way. That's okay. tightening them or snugging them even you want to make sure your threads are lined up on them adjusting caps again. At least we test fitted it before I put all this in. What I do is I leave them kind of loose and screw these in to align those threads. My homemade spanner wrench here. We did a long time ago. As you can see, it takes some patience. There we go. It's easy to get them crooked. It takes some patience to get them lined up. Just hand tighten them. Oh, you feel that snug enough. Snug it up a little bit. See if it still turns. That way we know everything's working right before we go to adjusting on stuff permanently. See if we can get that lucky on the other cat. I'm just going to race all the way up against it. Make sure your surfaces are clean. It's all said and done, you got these little caps right here. They go just like that. That one needs to be bent a little bit. Which those will be screwed in farther. And these little um, bolts right here hold it down on the cap. And that keeps that from turning. So after you get everything set. So the pinion comes in on this side of it. So before I stick my pinion gear back in it, I'm going to adjust it all the way over this way. That way my pinion gear will go back in easier. I also need to put my rubber seal on the pinion support too. So. Okay, since we got the rain gear adjusted all the way over that away, the pinion gear should go in easy. We don't want to forget my whole ring seal, brand new one. Came with the stuff I ordered, which I showed you in the last video. Just 
going to get my O-ring in there. I already got a new pinion seal on it. And let me just... Now, it only go in one way. You can spin this around the wrong way and the logos won't line up. So. Gotta watch that. Don't check it out before you put it together. You can get yourself aggravated. Okay. Now that I got that rubber seal in there, it don't want to slide in very easily. Don't worry, I'm not forcing it against the beer. It's just that rubber seal to go in straight. Okay, so now we got to adjust your last caps. We don't even have them tied up against each other. I just got it all in place and loose and away from the pinion gear so I could get the pinion gear in, like I explained earlier. So now we definitely need to come this way towards me. So I'm going to take my last caps and start with my spanner wrench and start adjusting this way. And as soon as it feels like. Getting close enough to that pinion gear, I'll go ahead and have them just tight against each other so that you get the preload on the carrier bearings. And when we get it to where it feels close, we'll put an indicator on it and check it and fine tune the adjustment with these lash caps. Okay, we're way too tight now. We're up against it. I didn't I didn't put a lot of pressure on it though, so no worries there. Back that off a little bit though. There we go. Yeah, I, I pushed it up against there, but not a lot of pressure on it, so no harm done. Wow, feel, feels like it's getting close already, so. Okay, now that I'm feeling that tighten up, that means I'm getting a little preload in there. going by feel. Well, I'm not going to trust feel. I'm going to put an indicator on it. But just saying. Put together pretty easy. And what helps is I recently put one to get one of these together for a guy I know. Made a little money off of it. So I became, since I hadn't done one in a while, it kind of helped me become more familiar with them again. Okay, I don't feel any tight spots. I'm just going to get my preload in there and get, make sure they're tightened up against each other. It's pretty much something you can go by feel. 
Make sure you got no back and forth slot. You can feel a little bit in there. See what you got to do is now we got to figure out a way to mount our indicator on it, which I don't have the best setup for that. I have to rig something up. I would like to buy a real pinion depth checking tool and I got a magnetic base. Magnetic base doesn't work too good on putting a dial indicator on this because you don't have much surface here. And all my hardware for my magnetic base dial indicator is messed up. Alright, we're going to get that indicator rigged up and then we'll fine tune that. Okay, I did myself a favor and made me a little solid mount here. I just had a little block of steel. Right, this right here, I drilled a hole in it, tapped a 3 8 hole in it, and just bolted it from the back. Now I got something solid to clamp my indicator to. So, I've already checked this um, end play and I did some adjusting. Like I told you earlier, the lash, you can take these lash caps, you screw this one out and that one in, and you move it towards the pinion and tighten that one loosen that one move it away and the idea is if whatever setting you get let's say you want it you got ten thousandths and you want to tighten it up by five you would uh, loosen this one up a little bit and tighten that one in about the same amount of travel basically the concept is to move the ring here this way or that way and keep your preload so I've already checked it I've got about four or five, I think. Set this on zero. If you can see that. And you got to kind of hold your pinion with your hand. I guess you could uh, clamp something on it to make it really solid because it's kind of hard to get an accurate, a consistent reading because that pinion will move on you a little bit. But you can kind of feel the play. And I'm getting about four thousandths clearance there, which I think is good. Depends on the application. Uh, automatic on the street, I mean, you can run it as loose as 10. Uh, I know for drag racing, uh, if it's a stick car, you want it tighter, so I was told. So if there's less slam, room for it to, the teeth to slam into each other. But I was always told about eight thousandths is acceptable, eight to 10, which I got five, which will be fine also. And you want to make sure But you're getting pretty close to the same reading all the way around. This is about the exact opposite end. You want to make sure you're getting a consistent reading all the way around it. And that's, that's looking pretty good. That means we've got all our surfaces good and clean. Everything was deburred and bolted together good and flat. That's, that's a good sign. Okay, that was about halfway around. We'll try a quarter way around. As you can see, it moved on, but I'm still getting still getting four. It's, it seems really consistent all the way around. So we're good there. And now before I call it good, I need to torque these down. They're, they're tight down, they're snug down, but they're not torqued down. And I believe they're about 70 foot pounds. See if that made a difference. Would we have four or five? Again, 
We didn't change it for the deal. So now we're going to use some uh, ear marking compound. I'm going to clean that ear off real good. And uh, we'll double check opinion death by making sure we got a good looking uh, wear pad. Okay now, you got a drive side and a coast side. This is your drive side right here. Which means when the car's going forward, that pinion is turning against that side and it's pulling away the car. Coast side, when you let off, or actually you know, if you're in reverse, you kinda you get that backlash and and you'll get some wear on that side. So we're gonna rub some of this stuff right here. First time I ever used gear marking compound. Well, like I said, I've done it with grease and it's it works okay, I guess. And I need a little brush. I don't have a brush, but I'll get a Q-tip. Like I said, if you don't have a brush, use a Q-tip. See, you don't want it too thick on there. You want to kind of spread it even on both the coast and the drive side. A brush would still work better. This is all I've got. We'll do about four teeth. And the whole idea is you want to make sure your gear contact is kind of in the middle on both the coast and the drive because that's where the, the tooth is strongest. If you got it too high, uh, you could risk breaking the tooth off and it would wear funny and get noisy. Too low, it, could, it would make it wear funny and get noisy. I don't know about braking. It would be less likely to break if you had it too deep. But the whole idea is to get in the middle. I'm hoping that since we used the pinion depth checking measurement, that we are really close and don't have to change it. I'm going to cap to this thing. It's one tiny tube. But this stuff, it only cost me like five bucks on eBay with free shipping. So they say the whole idea to try to do this without getting in the way. The camera, in a little tight spot here. But you want to put some pressure on it. And we go through it and then. Go back the other way. Let's see if one time we'll do it. Yeah, it's not a bad. It's a little low. Yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah. It's on the low side, but it is kind of. It's not too high on the edge. Let's get a little diagram here and see what they say. You can see right there is the idea. It could stand to come up some. Actually, yeah, okay, there's, yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. Still, I think ideally, if you look right there, I would want that to come up some. So maybe, Tell me. We, we already have our backlash about right, so let's see. What would it take to raise that? The drive said. Okay, so I think we got it good enough. It's Maybe I could make it a little more perfect, but um, I'm going to call it good enough. What I did was, I had a 12,000 shim in here when I checked it earlier. I went with a 10, which moved it in two thousandths, because I read the instructions, and they said it was heavy. If it's Here's what you want to go for. Drive side, coast side right here, and I'm pretty close to that. Um, 
And they said if you're heavy on the toe, which I kind of felt I was, which is down at the bottom, to go with less shim. They said go three at a time. I couldn't find a 9,000 shim, so I went from a 12 to a 10. Moved it in two, and also did a little research on actual backlash. And I gave it a little more backlash. I haven't measured it yet. I went by feel. Had to loosen these up. And I just backed this one off on this side about a quarter of a turn and tightened this one a quarter of a turn, which gave me a little more. I'm going to check. Now, you, you can, for street use, especially with an automatic, um, you can get away with 10. Uh, I had it sit a little too tight. I was thinking of uh, drag racing specs, honestly. So, um, so yeah, as you can see, we're still a little low on the uh, drive side, but there it's not quite contacting from there to there. And the coast side is looking pretty good. Right there. Well, actually, this is the drive side. And, yeah, this is the coast side is perfect. Yeah, that's the coast side. I'm sorry. Right there. It's right in the middle. And here's your drive side. And as you can see, contact starts from there up. And here's what they recommend. So, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to wipe this stuff off. I'll double check with the indicator on the backlash. And we'll be ready to put this thing in the car. Backlash change did not... It didn't make it as loose as I thought, which is good. I still got around... I got around 8. Try that. 7, actually. Yeah, about 7 or 8. So, that's still acceptable. And... That's just the difference a couple thousandths on a shim and backlash can make. It moved that wear mark in that marking compound up to just the, almost as good as the uh, recommended wear in the picture show. So um, I would call that good enough. I'm going to make sure everything's tight. Okay. We'll take these back out, put some Loctite on them, and then i got to put my caps back on and we should be ready to go ready to put it in the car